You want to share and create amazing application in data science with your colleagues and make progress even faster. You want to have a consistent and reproducible workflow. And eventually you also want to deploy the very same application in many, many, many other platforms. Today we are going to look at a cutting edge technology that will allow you to do all of that. Indeed, you need to check out Acorn. Let's get started. In few words, Acorn is a platform, or well, a series of abstraction allowing you to build application just like you were doing with Docker Compose. And by the way, we have a video on that. So imagine that to compose all your application or your frameworks, starting for example for machine learning frameworks like MLflow, and then pack them into a declarative language where you describe all the needed step to achieve the final goal. That is a functional platform with all your code, with all your work in data science. What we're going to do is starting from scratch, we're going to set up a Kubernetes cluster and then we are going to install on top of that Acorn platform. From there, we are going to see from the very first steps how you can install any application and then we are going slowly but steady increasing the difficulty until a final platform will appear. What I mean by platform? Well, at least two components. The first one is for interactive analysis, so a JupyterLab instance, and the other one is MLflow. So tracking your experiments is fundamental in any kind of science. So you have to step by step get track of what you do and eventually being able to revert new changes. So just let's start with the requirements. Well, they are pretty easy if you want to just touch the surface of what you can do with this technology. And in practice, you need an editor and a set of containers that you want to orchestrate together, creating your recipe for your application to be deployed. Very, very, very similar to the Docker Compose that we saw in the last episode. And, and that's all you need if you want to go with the service-as-a-service approach that the Acorn guys provides you with. So you just need a GitHub account, log in into your service, and we are going to see how you can do that just in a few minutes. Then one approach that is more complete approach where you host the Kubernetes cluster, the resources on your own, so on premise or on any kind of public cloud provider. And you know, it's more interesting for geeks people, but if you only want to leverage something or for you, you can still go for the services as a service approach. If the first approach looking at you and as analyzers, the other part is looking at a power user probably. So someone that wants to provide a platform for other people. In any case, forget about Kubernetes. So when we are going to deploy application, if you do know already how Kubernetes work, forget about this because the main point here is to redesign how you deploy application on Kubernetes cluster. That's the ambition. Let's dive into the details. Acorn documentation first. So we are going to go to acorn.io and you will be prompted with this nice home page, but this is not the most interesting thing. The most interesting thing is the following one. So you can give it a try directly on the SaaS platform without any infrastructure underneath. So we are going to use the very simple, a very simple example. So we are going to log in. This is the only requirement that you have. And indeed, you will be logged in into the service as a service platform. So from here, you can start playing with everything we are going to touch in this demo and even more directly without needing any kind of infrastructure. You will leverage the resources that are provided by Acorn in this platform. So let's get started. Here on the upper left hand side, you can see that there are the so-called projects. So the idea is that just like namespaces, you want to separate, for example, different kinds of resources or different kinds of clusters and we include them as a project inside this uh, interface. And then you have 
different options. One of the most interesting ones is that you can start the playground directly, so you can build and run whatever you're writing. So at the speed of your toes, basically, you can write down things, write down your containers and have them executed on AWS resources without knowing anything. I mean, literally anything about Kubernetes. One simple example, the one default that we see here, oh, let me increase the size. So it's a simple container. You have an Nginx container, you want to run this. So you can start from this UI. It's very nice to get started at least. So you have your container with your configuration and we are going to write down an example of this. And that's all. Now your Im image has been created and you can see here the endpoints are going to be provided and exposed. If you go here, voila, you have already exposed a simple container with an HTTP endpoint and you're done. So with the very same philosophy, we can go a step farther. So we can, for example, deploy for your data science project, for your data science class, for example, you can build in this way a Jupyter Lab instance on demand. What I mean by that? So let's, for example, say that we're going to create another container called Jupyter Lab that it will be based on a different image. For example, let be this image be a simple Jupyter Lab image, right? So for example, uh, the one that we use in the previous episodes that are Jupyter slash tensor flow uh, notebook and Python 3, 3.10. And let's say that we are going to publish the HTTP part on, on this one. And again, let's say that you need to indicate a password for this. So you can automatically generate password for you in Acorn using the secrets environment. So you can ask at deployment time, look, I need a password. Just provide me with one and tell me what it is at the end of the story. So you don't need really from an application level, from developer level, you don't need anything else. You don't need to understand what is happening underneath in Kubernetes cluster, right? You just need a freaking password. So here it is. Uh, to dedicate a new section called secrets and indicate JLab token. For example, we want a JupyterLab token for this. And eventually you want to specify which is the destination of this token. So it's a JupyterLab token. You can add a description. Mm, this is my password. And then you can define the type of secret that you want to define. So there are different kinds of, of secrets that you can ask for being generated. And you will find more in the documentation, but for the time being, we just need the type. Surprise, surprise, token. So, and eventually we are going also to specify the length of our token. So it will be 32, 32 chars. And, oops, let me add this. And also the allowed characters. Characters. And this will be something like A Z A Z nine right? So here it is. We have a complete example of a Jupyter Lab, and then we uh, with a Jupyter Lab container, and 
the port exposed and now we have to use the JLab token provided in here and bring it into the deployment so how so how you should so how you should do that well it's pretty simple you can import the secret as an environment for instance so you can deploy an environment variable for this container that is called jlab token and then you can select secret from the secrets you can mount this value mean jlab token that is the name we can see it here and the key inside this token that for any token that is of the type token the key is token so now we have the environment the last step is saying all right cnd i want to execute some stuff so bash minus c and a command as an entry point so the default entry entry point for the that image is start dot sh so i'm going to replicate that and then after the environment is set call jupyter lab minus minus server app dot token equal and now i specify my token in here and the token will be the auto generated and imported from the environment so jlab token oops all right that's pretty much all so now you need an additional point that is the following build and run and let's see what happened you can see that after some times you have um, the jupyter lab container starting up not ready yet but eventually we have our running instance we can see here that we are asked to introduce a token and the token generated you can find in your acorn applications so you can find there is something running that is our jupyter lab you have this nice interface to control everything you deployed so far in this project and then you have a jupyter lab token in here what you have to do is to click on the secrets and here you have on the right hand side in this tab you can reveal the value and copy so i revealed and copied and now i can go ahead and deploy my jupyter lab so you can do that with your with a default image you have your application everything works perfectly and in no time you have something to play with i stress again that this is done with the idea that you can reproduce this everywhere so you can offer to your user if you're an administrator a platform that is reproducible everywhere and from the user perspective you should learn something that you can reproduce everywhere so it's a win-win situation for both parts before leaving this screen just one very very nice opportunity that is offered by acorn so you can share from this interface your application now I'm packaging what I've just produced, so this Acorn file, into a blob of information sent to a container registry, just like a real container image with all the application details. And I can then share a link or a QR code or create even a, a button like this one in any language you want with just one click. So you created your application with all your machinery just imagine your jupyter lab with predefined notebooks predefined libraries all in there this 
blob of definition of the application is stored on a container registry and it can be reproduced by any other one, so by your class, if you're teaching, for example, clicking on a link or, or scanning a QR code. That's really incredible, right? So as you can see, I can click here and voila, I have my resources. That's all. I'm going to, to deploy this one and I will have the same results I just obtained. I, I think there is nothing easier than this. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy our cluster, first cluster on Chivo Cloud. So it will be a normal Kubernetes cluster. So if you already have one with an ingress and a persistent volume storage class uh, available, you can start from there and skip on the next uh, chapter just before we install Acor. All right, so we log in. You will receive uh, some free credits to try this out. So if you're interested, you just need to reproduce this very safe step, register and get started. So we are going to create a new cluster with the name SciGigs Demo. For this exercise, we just need uh, one node probably, two, let's keep it two. We use a large one and also we are going to see we should open some ports. Here we open just the 443 for the ingress, nothing uh, particular. And then you have additional application that you can install just after the cluster will be brought up. It's pretty neat and pretty useful. For example, we can decide to, uh, oops, sorry about that. We can decide to use Nginx as an ingress, remove the traffic default. So then you can select uh, a certain manager that is useful if you want to expose HTTP endpoints. And we are going to select, so we have th these three application. We are going to select one for the storage. So search manager, long guard, metric server, and nginx. All right, so we can then get started. We will use the K3S uh, instance and flannel, so the simple one, and you will see how fast it's good to create a cluster from this. Usually it's after, it's just after a couple of minutes, you have a functioning cluster. It's pretty impressive, I have to say. So yeah, you see the build time remaining is around two minutes. While this is charging, we have a command line interface to install and we need to go to the documentation and see, okay, install my Econ CLI. So I'm on Mac, I'm already did this. So you have instruction for Mac, for Linux, for whatever you want. All right, as you can see, the cluster is finished, is ready to be used and as a matter of fact, you just need to download the kubeconfig file. Put this into download. And voila, so you need to export the kubeconfig file. kubeconfig equal to, oops, downloads. Let me get the name before, so downloads Shivo Sigex demo. This is the one and export this as kubeconfig. All right. So if I do kubectl get node, I have my nodes ready to be used. Afterward, I want to also install a Let's Encrypt certification uh, automation. So I'm going to apply this manifest, very basics. I will leave any detail of these installations and all the next steps into the description. So don't miss out. And uh, here you can see the cert issuer, it's just a cert manager issuer for creating certificates for your service when exposed. And we are going to apply cert issuer. So, right, so here it is. 
the issuer is applied. Now we need another information. And the other information is the following. It's about the name, the DNS name of our cluster. So we are going to need just this other information. Oops. We are going to add this other information into the installation script. Oops. So the installation script will be something like acorn install the name of our cluster that from this previous attempt change, of course, time to time. This is our cluster name and this is our issuer. All right, ready, go. So this script is going to install everything you need from the runtime perspective. So all the components responsible to translate the JSON-like file that you produce into something else, into the actual container running on a Kubernetes cluster. Right, eventually we are done. We have a complete Acorn setup. And in fact, we can go ahead and say Acorn PS, for example, just like you do with Docker. It's incredible, right? You are on a remote cluster on a Chivo platform and you are interacting with them just like Docker PS. Okay, so there are additional steps to, to be taken at this point. We need to go and set up our platform for data science. That's our initial goal. And for that, we need just to introduce another concept that in Acorn terminology is called service. What does this mean? So you can look at the documentation for more fine-grained description, but all in all, services, you can see that like container or application that are, that are enabling your main containers to work. For instance, our MinIO object storage, so the object storage where you want to store your data, will be an accessory for your final platform that is composed of JupyterLab and a tracking server on MLflow. So th these containers will be interfaced with an external service, if you want, that you can provide out of the box from either the administration side or from the user perspective. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to set up a MinIO server as a service. So we are going to see how you can define a service and then we use this service inside our Acorn file, our deployment. So we are going to link our applications, in particular the MLflow application to the storage endpoint. Okay, so let's get started. We need to import in this other window, sorry, this kubeconfig uh, just to be aligned. So, all right. And let's dive into a typical project. A typical project for Acorn is something that looks li like this. So a Docker file for your uh, applications. In our case, this will be the JupyterLab one. This one will be the MLflow one. All right, me if you want to share this with other people and you want to collaborate, of course, it's necessary. The, your Acorn file or the main application, and then a folder called SVC. All this document, you will find them into the repository I put into the links. So now here we are. I put a bonus, sorry. I put a bonus track for you. Yeah, so I'm not only going to leave an example with Minayo, but another possible, uh, with a, but another possible auxiliary service that we want to deploy is for example a message queue and one of the simplest message queue that you want to try out first i think is nats.io so here you can see also the link and the information for how to deploy additional services so let's take a look by the way to the mini minio service folder as you can see immediately it looks like a simple Acorn project. So it does have an Acorn file, readme and whatever you want. So 
The only thing that changed is that you should treat the echo file a bit differently. So for instance, only cow. Yes. So the icon, the typical icon file for a service, for the simplest possible service you can imagine. So a Docker container running a MinIO server, exposing an S3 object storage APIs to other services, to other containers. Sorry about that. So it's something like this. You are going to describe all the metadata of your service. So, for example, read me icon, description name, whatever. And then you can say, okay, I can take some arguments. So you can pass at runtime some information. And this is, for example, the username you want to, to put as a default admin username. And then you have one additional step that differs from normal acorn. You have to define the output. What does it mean? You, you want to deploy something, get some metadata from that. That can be the endpoint where this is exposed. That can be the uh, username and password of the service to be digested to other containers in your main parent acorn file. How you define this kind of output? You define them into services. Services, uh, in this case, you define the name of the service will be as S3 in this case, and you can define which kind of ports will be exposed by the service and also additional data structures, like for example, the username. So here you get then a normal definition of the server. You say um, what you want to run, in this case, the image of Minayo, the command that you want to run, where you want to store data, and load from the secrets the username and the password in this case. So if you remember correctly, everything is just like we did before. You have some kind of persistency, persistency needed at this stage. So, so you want to store data and keep it there as long as you want. So for this, there is the directory burp into the description file. Nothing fancy you will be able to find more details, but for our use case, we want to store in data a persistent volume. Again, you see the beauty of this, you don't have to care about creating a volume because it's not your job. As a data scientist, you just want to say, okay, I want something persistent, an object storage that store my data. The, all the rest is up to you. In our case, they will be stored underneath in long arm that we set up in the cluster we created on Chivo. So, and finally, some probes to say, okay, when my service will be considered ready. Eventually, I want to store the output of my, uh, eventually I want to store my credentials and have them generated automatically on uh, generated automatically at runtime. Not completely automated in this case. We want a basic authentication, so user name and password, with a username that is predefined from the argument, and the password that will be generated at runtime. So that's all. You want to pass local data uh, information as the output. So here you define eventually what are the outputs. So you store in local data or the syntax specific for the services. It will be uh, an episode itself to understand how this flow works, but the best thing to me at least was to try it out with a real project, touch with my hands and see how it goes. So I will leave you these examples in the description in our repository so you can play with. Just keep in mind that there are information that will be forwarded from the MinIO service to the container of JupyterLab and MLflow. How you can see now in the main icon file how this is done. So we set up, for example, different kinds of services. The one that we just put in our description file, it's a local one and it is called 
the S3 one, then we you can store on a Docker registry, for example, any other kind of services. So you can see here there is a, a NetsIO service, there is a MariaDB offered and maintained by Acorn itself, and so on and so forth. So all your basic stuff, your basic infrastructural stuff for the average data science, uh, uh, science experience are covered. So you have a database, you have object storage, you have message queue, you're done. All the other containers are your the core of your platform. So for instance, you can set up an ML flow tracking server using the image that you put in the locker folder, and we are going to look at uh, how it's made, but, and then specify which kind of services you are going to consume. And for, for the case of ML flow, you are going to connect to all these services. And again, you see the exposing ports, so the 5000, the CMD will be a pretty tricky in this case, but all in all, just be careful that we are going to pass the host name of our service, uh, that we say we want to store artifacts uh, as, as well on the S3 backend. And also we want to connect to the database for tracking, for tracking stuff. That's all. These environment variables are all passed directly by the Acorn runtime, because as you can see here, we are rendering these environments at runtime based on the services secrets. How you can call services secrets? Well, normal secrets are called in this name, in this case, just like in the JupyterLab. Uh, example. So we have some secrets defined below and you can import that. But for the S3 endpoint, for example, you this is the syntax to say, okay, I deployed a service called S3, take the address of that, take the admin username, admin password, and put this into an environment variable. Really simple like that, just like writing descriptive communication with your runtime. So it can be look complicated at the beginning, but it's not, it's really not more complicated than writing down a, docu uh, a Docker Compose file. You have to specify probes uh, and again, you specify JupyterLab with additional information that we want to pass inside our uh, lab instance. So you want to be able to connect to the object storage and to an MLflow service from inside your JupyterLab instance. That's all. Uh, here are the secrets that you want to create for both token and ML flow login. And that's really all. So let's just take a look now to the Docker file we use for the notebook. So here you can put it together all kinds of machinery inside your JupyterLab and use that container to, to bootstrap. And also you can configure the MLflow server editing the base image. Nothing, nothing fancy here. What is very uh, cool at this point is that you can specify and build your own image. So you remember where before we share a link to the Docker registry uh, image we, we store for our whole platform, this will be the same. So you will ship all this Acorn file, all this big and complex as you want machinery into a registry. It, and everyone, every class uh, in your, every, every student in your room, any other colleagues can replicate the very same environment, very same platform, just with one click. That's how powerful this tool is. So, uh, Dockerfy. Uh, sorry. So, Acorn build. For example, I can call this Acorn build SciGeeks demo, SciGeeks demo platform. And this is going to start the building process of all the images that will be stored together with the description of the whole infrastructure. Eventually, when this is done, you can also push your image and share it from 
this tab here in the service that I showed you before. So do shared acorns. You can see here, I had already shared this platform before in some uh, preview and in also in an actual school, an open science school called SOSC. And then with the image there, you can share the link, the QR code and whatever. So I will let you some of these uh, URL into the description as well if you want to try the whole platform by one click. Once the build process finished, you will be prompted with this error. That means that you do not have the permission to load on the Docker registry, even if it's in your username. Because the build happens remotely, so you have to log in and delegate your credential there into the cluster. So to do that, you should simply say, okay, you can log in to docker.io, for example, if you use the registry in Docker, and you're done. Then the second try should go perfectly fine, and the push should go like a shot. So this image is the same that you can also find in the description that I already pushed for the school on open science that I uh, showed you before. So if you go here into the, uh, the this image here will be the same that the one we are going to deploy now and, and do something like acorn run my image. So eventually you will end up with a green endpoints like these ones and you will be able to take the address returned and go into to the endpoints well we retrieved the secrets but let's see again how you can do that so you do acorn secret and you get all the secret now we, we need this one so this one is retrievable like reveal this secret here so the token will be this one and voila that's all i have my jupyter lab instance and also if i want to check the ml flow tracking server i can reach it to this address and here it is, I can create new secrets uh, and so on and so forth. So one thing that we miss is the min, min IO endpoint, but it's easily reachable via this account PS. You see that here we have an endpoint also for the S3 object storage. Uh, we can reach it with this. And again, we can see the secrets for the MinIO authentication in here. So we can keep get acorn secret reveal S3. So you get the admin username and the, the password. You said, oopla. Uh, did I copy? And here it is. You can create baguettes and you can upload stuff as you want. So that's all, guys. That was all I wanted to share with you. You find all the details in the description once more. And don't worry, it takes some time to get some practice with all the details. But I just wanted to demonstrate that. All of this can be done and shared with these with these technologies. I also invite you to try your own cluster and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. That will help a lot. Thank you and see you on the next video where we are going to apply these very same tools for a real machine learning pipeline. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.